once upon a time, not so long ago, there was a little girl and her name was Emily. And she had a shop. There it is. It was rather an unusual shop because it didn't sell anything. You see, everything in that shop window was a thing that somebody had once lost and Emily had found and brought home to Bagpuss. Emily's cat, Bagpuss. The most important, the most beautiful, the most magical, saggy old cloth cat in the whole wide world. Well now, one day Emily found a thing. And she brought it back to the shop and put it down in front of Bagpuss, who was in the shop window, fast asleep as usual. But then Emily said some magic words. Bagpuss, dear Bagpuss, old fat furry catpuss, wake up and look at this thing that I bring. Wake up, be bright, be golden and light. Bagpuss, oh hear what I sing. Bagpuss was wide awake. And when Bagpuss wakes up, all his friends wake up too. The mice on the mouse organ woke up and stretched. <coughs> Madeleine the rag doll. Gabriel the toad. <coughs> and last of all, Professor Yaffle, who is a very distinguished old woodpecker. He climbed down off his bookend and went to see what it was that Emily had brought. <laughs> a bucket! A rotten old, grotty old, bashed up old bucket! The things Miss Emily brings! A rusty old, dusty old Irish bucket with a hole in it. Irish bucket? How do you know it's an Irish bucket? Well, uh, <laughs> it's an Irish bucket. I, uh, but I know it's an Irish bucket. Does it matter? Certainly it matters. That must be a special bucket. Maybe a magic bucket. Magic? What could be magic about a bit of old iron like that? Well, for a start, why is it smoking? Smoking? Yes, look. There is smoke coming out of it. Oh, look, smoke! It's burning, bucket burning, bucket burning, bucket burning, bucket burning, Hey, wait a minute. Mice, mice, hang on, wait. Don't go pouring water on a leprechaun. They don't like it. A leprechaun is one of the little people. The tiny magic people who are supposed to live in Ireland. And unless I'm mistaken, there's a leprechaun in that Irish bucket. No, oh, ridiculous, ridiculous. Leprechauns are just in stories. They are mythical, they aren't real. Well, perhaps we aren't real either. Anyway, real or not, he's playing the fiddle. playing it beautifully too. Ah oh, yes, I know that fiddle and the player. That's Seamus O'Hulian himself. Seamus O'Hulian of Gillicuddy. Oh yes, that's him. Yeah, I remember Seamus O'Hulian. Come to think of it, I remember he lived in a bucket. The last time I saw that bucket it was in the far west of Ireland, I think. I think. Yes, the far west of Ireland in a peat bog. There it was, smoking away. I remember I didn't notice the smoke. I sat on it. <coughs> Will you let me out? <coughs> Will you get off? You're choking me. 
Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. <coughs> <coughs> there, there I am, peacefully smoking a trout for me dinner, and you have to come and sit on me chimney. Oh, I beg your pardon. I, I, I didn't know it was your chimney. Ah, well, it's no matter. Now you've caught me, aren't you going to ask me where's me crock of gold? Crock of gold? What's a crock of gold? Don't you know what a crock of gold is? Ah, sure, you're an ignorant old bagpuss. Listen, I'll tell you. Every leprechaun has a crock of gold hidden away somewhere. It'll be an earthenware pot, and it'll be full of gold coins and pieces and brooches. Do you understand that? Oh, yes, yes. Good. Well, now, the story is, if you catch a leprechaun and grab him and hold him tight, you can say to him, where's your crock of gold? And he'll have to tell you. Oh, is that right? Well, don't worry. I don't want your crock of gold. Ah, Bagpuss, what a pleasure it is to meet you. I remember the last time I was caught. It was right in the middle of Michael O'Sullivan's field of cabbages. Forty acres it was, and every foot a cabbage. Think of it, Bagpuss. Forty acres of cabbages. Oh, right -o. I'll think of it while you tell me what happened, eh? I'm good at thinking. I think. I think. Forty acres of cabbages. Well, there it is. Ah, that was it. Yes. There I was, doing nobody any harm, burying my crack of gold in a safe place underneath one of the cabbages. And suddenly, like it was from out of nowhere, up jumps Michael O'Sullivan himself. Big Gara, says he, or words to that effect. So I've caught you at last, Seamus O'Hoolihan. So it seems, says I. And I don't need to tell you where my crock of gold is hidden. That you don't, says he. Because I saw you bury it under that cabbage. Now I run home for me spade to dig it up. Well now, says I, that's a stupid thing to do. There's thousands of cabbages here in this field. How will you know which one it is when you come back? That stopped him. There's intelligent ya, yeah, says he. And he took out his big knife and with one swipe he cut the cabbage clean in half down the middle. And he dashes off home to fetch his spade. Well, as it happened, he had a bit of a job catching his spade because once he was out of sight, I played a little tune on me old fiddle like this. Now, this is a powerful agricultural jig, and as soon as they heard it, every spade, axe, knife and cleaver came dancing out of their sheds and barns. Chomp, 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 chomp. Michael O'Sullivan had chased his spade and caught it and made it stand still long enough for him to carry it. I was half a mile away and almost every cabbage in that field was split clean in half. Ah, he was upset with Michael O'Sullivan. I should think so too. So would I be spoiling a whole field of cabbages like that. Ah, I dare say. But I'll tell you the truth. I was sorry for the fool O'Sullivan. So that night I played another tune on me fiddle. A sweet, mending lullaby it was, like this. And in no time at all, every cabbage in the field was mended and growing like mad again. Ah, oh, yes, that's a beautiful tune. Ah, sure, you're a wise cat, and I'm glad to know you. I tell you what I'll do. One day when you've got nothing else to do, I'll send me fiddle to play you a dance. How's that? Well, that's very kind of you. I look forward to that, I said. And he turned his bucket over with him underneath it, and that was the last I saw or heard of Shem Sahulahan from that day to this. Yes, look, look, there it is. It's a fiddle. Stop, stop, wait a minute. 
There, Charlie Mouse, you can play the fiddle beautifully. Oh, no. No, I wasn't. The fiddle was playing itself. Do you know Brian Olin? That's it. That's it. That's right. But wait for the mice. Magpus gave a big yawn and settled down to sleep. And of course, when Bagpuss goes to sleep, all his friends go to sleep too. The mice were ornaments on the mouse organ. Gabriel and Madeleine were just dolls. And Professor Yaffle was a carved wooden bookend in the shape of a woodpecker. Even Bagpuss himself, once he was asleep, was just an old, saggy cloth cat. Baggy and a bit loose at the seams. But Emily loved him. <laughs> 